Hey guys and welcome back. So this is tutorial part three and what we're going to be doing for just a moment is we're going to take a look inside of the Rage plugin hook and we'll, I'll actually, I'm going to close this out really quick. I'm going to show you exactly how to get to this. So we're going to double click on the Rage plugin hook and then it's going to pop up sometime sometime soon. Rage. There it is. And then we're going to click on this simple little settings. Now you have, you see it's going to go through its little list before that starts. You have until before it goes away to, to actually start Grand Theft Auto. Otherwise, it's going to get sucked into the game and you're kind of going to have to, you know, quit the game and go back out and then go back into this menu as a pain in the butt. So just click that little settings button and this will pop up. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you your console key. Where's your console key? Console key is F4. Um, and what this is going to do is this changes uh, when you go to like load your your menu or you go to load at a LSPFR or you go to Force Duty, depending on how you guys actually go about playing this game or setting everything up, um, this is going to be your console key. And then you have your plugin uh, timeout threshold. I don't ever change any of this stuff. I just kind of leave this alone. Alone. This one right here, I actually usually do. And the reason I do that is because I usually um, I, I'm like recording, so I, I do videos, um, or I'll be making like an actual like scene, and I, I I just I can't have this in there disturbing my regular gameplay when I'm doing that. Um, and then we have our plugin section. Basically, we're going to have don't load any plugins on startup. We have load all plugins on startup or just load these plugins on startup. Obviously, I'm still making a few of these. Um, car seating. This one's, okay, so this one's different. This is the car seating, the, the plugin versus the script. And I'll, I'll show you the difference when we get into the game. Um, and, and I can actually make a different video about the difference between making a plugin and making a script, but we'll we'll save that for a different one. Um, but for right now, it's just I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that one in there, and we're gonna go through our advanced uh, settings. Just disable direct hook. Um, we kind of don't want to do that because it kind of usually requires a direct X, or certain plugins might require direct X, or let's say script hook v dot net. You know, you just I, again, I don't usually max with this. It says, if tick prevents Rage plugin hook from hooking into the rendering system of the game, this will disable system depending on it. Like the command console, try checking if this option, if you're having difficulties launching Rage plugin hook. So, if you're having difficulties with it, you can go ahead and you can click this and you hit the save and launch as if you're having issues. However, you're not going to get your, back here, this is not going to load um, according to what this is telling you down here. Uh, you will not have a console, so you will not have that that log in game. Um, then you have disable custom loading screen, enable custom backgrounds for loading screen. Is I mean, okay, so if ticked, images found in the loading screen folder will be used for the loading screen when Rage plugin hook. Uh, this option um, will not impact loading times either way, which is very true. Uh, it's basically what it's telling me. Um, I know it's in one of these. Such a plug in size, logs, LSP, MR, plugs, script, I can't remember if it's. I have to make one called loading screen. What is that? Okay. This is where it's very peculiar. Let's see. It's loading screen. So I actually spelled it correctly because it's capital L, it's capital S, and there's no space. So whatever pictures that I put in here um, will automatically be loaded. And that's kind of what it's telling you for that. However, I don't really care. 
I kind of like the loading screens that are already in there just because I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and we're going to go through the enable countermeasures against online vehicles being removed in single player. So if take DLC vehicles can be spawned in single player, this may cause problems for some users. Leave unticked if your game is crashing. So you can enable this um, for DLC vehicles that can be spawned in single player. However, I don't really have any issues because I don't even play online GTA 5. I, I don't. I just mod, so... I kind of can't. <laughs> um, and then here's a debug switch. Do not tick this option unless specifically requested to do so by Rage Plugin Hook Developer. So do not touch this unless you're told to by someone with authority. They'll be wearing a Rage Plugin Hook badge and they'll, yeah, just don't touch it. No. All right, and then this is in developer develop mode. Um, if Enabled certain tools to assist in developing plugins will be enabled. I'm so glad I found this because I'm going to actually be doing this. Um, however, not right this second. Um, and then we have game settings. In game settings, we have a few things. I'm going to go through with this backup version. Always backup a version that works. I don't care if you guys are like, well, I don't want the space. It's really, look at that. Hold on. It just popped up. Requires about 930 megabytes. That's not even one full gigabyte. One full gigabyte, and then you could avoid all the in, like updating issues that you have, and you'll always have a game to go back to. Like right now, me, I am on this one, but I can go back to this one if I want to. I'm already up to date, and I don't have to, and I could just delete this, but if something happened right now, and my game just would not launch and would not launch, I could go here. Also, having the Steam version helps you. Um, this is only if you have Grand Theft Auto with Steam, and it's Verify Integrity of Game Cache. The beautiful thing about this button is Steam will automatically go in there and find out what files are missing. It will not touch your mods folder. It will not touch any other files that have been added to it. It will just figure out, out of Grand Theft Auto's files, what you're supposed to have. It'll figure out what's missing, and it'll put it all back in there. So if you're having really bad game issues, and it's just not working for you, go to Verify Integrity of Game Cache. It's a lot easier than re-downloading the entire game. I promise you. Uh, for the next one is, I saved this one for last because there's so many options in this. And, and it's because, so we can start anything with, these are command lines. So you can start it with safe mode, which you don't really need to do unless everything's crashing. However, this isn't really going to load. Um, if I'm understanding, it just won't load like most of your plugins because it's safe mode, so it can't. Um, so it'll just load the game. So if your game's not working, like if you try to do it in safe mode, it's not working, that's when you're going to want to be like, okay, I'm going to come down here and verify the integrity of my game cache. Um, and for here, there's the ignored profile, uh, which ignores the current profile. I'm not quite sure what this does because I've never actually used this. Um, there's use minimum settings, which is just like I use the bare basic settings, probably like 800 by 600 pixels. It's not going to look fantastic. Uh, use auto settings, um, which is probably going to pick the best settings for your graphics card. Uh, then there's Direct 10, which is forces Direct 10. There's 10.1, it forces uh, Direct X 10.1, and then there's Direct. X11. So if you're having any issues and it says that you specifically have to run Direct X11, then you could click this. However, what's going to end up happening is because right now I don't have any of them checked, it'll float between these using the appropriate one while maintaining a proper balance between that and my uh, with my graphics card so that for my graphics card so that it won't like overpower my GPU. And it, it wants to do that because, like, I don't have a 1080. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't have a 1080. I have a 470. It's a Radeon 470, and it's not the best graphics card in the world. So what mine will do is, if it's starting to render too hard on DirectX 11, it'll maybe drop down to 10.1 and give it a better flow. Um... But if I force this one, then it makes it so I have to use that so I might end up with choppy uh, parts of my game where it looks like it's lagging. And then some of the, these other issues that will come along with forcing a, a certain type of render. Um, 
instead of allowing the GPU to decide for itself. Uh, now here we have a benchmark. Uh, start the benchmark test from the command. I'm not quite sure. I've never dealt with benchmarks, but if, um, frame times. I'll put the individual frame times from the benchmark. So I'm guessing if I if I put these in here, it'll show me when I'm in the game, like um, my what my frame times are, like what my frames per second are. And then there's disable audio. Let's actually start to look at bench times. Okay. So this one I think you would need if you want like if you want to use frame times, you'd have to have benchmark and benchmark frame times. Or benchmark and benchmark um, disable audio is kind of what it's seeming like. With this one we have a mouse exclusion. Uh, gamer uses mouse exclusively, which means um, you're not gonna use your uh, game controller or any other uh, input system that might be like conflicting with the mouse. Um, you have the force window mode, the force full screen mode, the borderless mode. Um, these are all you know. However you like to play, uh, you can set these two. And then this is disallow resize window. So basically, okay, I'm in here. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, the Windows shortcut for full size is Alt Enter, and what that'll do is that'll resize. Like let's say that it's not in full screen. Let's just say it's like in a border, and you can see it's like right here, and it looks like a little square, and you're like, why is it not full screen? Well, you can hit Alt and um, F, or sorry, Alt and Enter, and it'll make it full screen. Um, but if you do the uh, disallow resize window, it won't allow for that to happen. And then there's don't count hyper threaded cores as real ones to create task on. Not sure quite what that is, hyper threading. I haven't dealt with that. And there's fog volumes, uh, which is enable lights, volumetric uh, effects, and foggy weather. So I feel like that is a difference in how the fog styles are. Uh, it looks like they're set the whole rendering pipeline to 16-bit, which is HDR. Uh, we have HD streaming in flight, which is uh, enable streaming while in flight. And then ignore different video cards, so don't reset settings with a new card. Uh, disable DOF, disable in-game depth of field effects. Um, that's all on what you guys want to do. There's particle shadows, there's reflection blur, there's SSA. This is all starting to get, you know, this most of this stuff has to do with your graphics card and how your graphics card is going to handle processing this game. Um, and it, some of it comes down to what can your graphics card handle and some of it comes down to what would you like to play in. You know, do you want it to be a little choppy, but you want it to be really good graphics? Do you want to be a little less on the graphics, but you don't want it to be choppy? Um, it's all whatever you guys want it to be. And I kind of took this in a different direction than what I was going to go. I was just going to start the game and show you, but I figured that uh, these settings are actually more important than a lot of people realize. Because if you're having issues with certain crashes, it could be specifically that it's forcing a DirectX 11. It could be that, you know, you might be forced in windowed mode. You don't want that. Um, so these are all just different settings that will affect how your graphics card actually handle the game. If you guys like this, um, go ahead and give me a like and a sub. And I will keep making these videos for you. I have a couple more that I'd like to make. And so just go ahead and let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Put them in the comment section below and I would be glad.